So this is a pretty obscure problem, but it's one of those things that I just can't let go. Like I just had to figure it out. And it was also kind of a nightmare trying to figure this out. So I'm really hoping that like at least one other person might find some help from this tutorial. But I was trying to map out uh, an N64 controller on Bodicera. And more specifically on the Moop, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, the Moopin 64 emulator. Because some of the other N64 emulators they have the in-game core menu where you can go to the core options in-game and just uh, configure the controller there. But the Moopin64 emulator doesn't seem to have that capability, at least not that I could find. The same key combinations that opened it in other games didn't work in that game couldn't seem to find any kind of menu. And the reason I wanted to use that emulator specifically is because from my experience it really is the best one, at least that the best one available on Bodicera. Uh, the other ones seem to either be lower quality or they, they don't run as smoothly, but Moopin64 is awesome, so I really wanted to get it to work. I spent about 10 hours messing around with different settings and editing different config files and just trying like a ton of stuff only only about half knowing what I'm doing and I and I finally I finally did figure it out and even though it took a while to find a solution it's not it's not terribly difficult to actually get this mapped out get the controller mapped out so on the off chance that you're having the same issue whether it's trying to map out an N64 controller specifically or if you're having uh, one of the main problems that I encountered, which is manually editing a config file for the, for the core, for the controller, but then it would get overwritten every time I open the game. But anyway, I'll walk you through the steps and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, so one of the first things I should note is that I have a, you're going to need a keyboard plugged in. So I have a keyboard and a mouse plugged in, and we're going to need that for when we actually edit the configuration files and such. Now that's also useful because the N64 controller doesn't have a select button, which in Bodicera, the select button is typically used for as the hotkey to, uh, to bring up different menus or to exit a game when you're in it, so you're going to need uh, your keyboard plugged in. Okay, so then we're going to take our USB N64 controller, and we're going to plug it in and get a, get like a notepad or something to write on ready, because you're going to need to note down a few things. The first thing, as we plug this in, in the top here, it's going to bring up the name of the controller. You're going to need to know what that is. So we plug this in, and you see how it kind of pops up on the top here? So you need to know what kind of controller you have. In this case, it's the SwitchCo LTD. Next, we're going to bring up um, Bodocera's controller mapping menu, and we're going to map out some of the buttons. But we also, this is where your this is where your notepad comes in handy. We also need to know the numbers for the buttons. So when we man when we go to manually edit the configuration file, uh, the text with uh, the text of the config file, you'll need to know what what the system sees the buttons as or how it numbers them. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to press spacebar to bring up my main menu, controller settings. I have. I have the input one set to my controller name, Switchco. That's the thing that popped up before. Then we go to configure a controller. I'm going to hold down a button to get into the menu. Okay, so here's each of our controls here. I'll zoom in real quick. So we need to know the names of our buttons. Specifically, we're going to be able to map out almost everything here except for C down and C left. So the first thing we'll do, we'll press C down. See how that says button zero? Make a note that C down is button zero. Then C left. Button three. Make a note that C left is button three. Then we're, we're just going to go back up with our keyboard because those aren't the right buttons and we need to map them properly. That's just so we know which buttons those were, what the numbers was. Now we're going to start configuration of the buttons we can do. Okay, so we're starting with up, down, left, right, and that's going to correspond to this pad on the left, the D-pad. So up is up, down is down, left, and then right. Press the start button for start. Select button, we're going to hold down 
any button to skip that because there's no select button on this controller. This A button on the right, we can set that to C right. And notice you don't really want to pay attention to the letters for these ones specifically. You want to pay attention to what the, to the spot on the pad. So A where the right pad button is highlighted, that is C right. B with this where the bottom button is highlighted, that's actually going to be our A button. X, where the upper button is highlighted, that's going to be our C up. Y, where the left button is highlighted, that's going to be our B button. Screen button B. Left analog up, this is our analog stick. So we're going to go up, and then left analog left. And this is actually where it got kind of confusing as well to begin with, because the right analog buttons, they do correspond to the C buttons, but because we only have up and left, we can't map them all, and it doesn't auto-detect the other ones. Because it reads that as an axis. It reads it as like an analog stick, and that causes problems in the game, and we can't map the buttons out that way. So we need to just skip the, over those. And then we're later going to go into the config file, and that's where we're going to set those. But for now, hold down the button to skip right up. Hold down the button to skip right analog left. Now we have L1, that's our L1 button. L1 is our L1 button here. R1 is our right one, uh, trigger button. L2 is the Z button on the back. R2, we're going to skip that and we're just going to skip all the rest. We're going to skip L3, R3, and the hotkey. Skip all that, press OK. We can say no to this message because we're going to use our keyboard for the hotkeys. We don't need it on this controller because we don't have a select button. OK, so we'll go back. We can exit out of this menu. So as it stands with that mapping, we have everything but the C down and the C left buttons configured. So now we're going to go into the back end of the operating system. We're going to go into the file structure. And I'm going to show you the config file we need to edit and also how to edit that file. So what we're going to do here, we're going to press F1 on the keyboard and that's going to take us into the file system. And then if you look on the left side of your screen, Make sure you're in the folder called the share folder. Then we're going to, once we're in the share folder there, we're going to come over here to system. The, I know you can't see it, but it's called, it's the only folder labeled system. You're going to click system. And then configs. It's right towards the middle of the screen here. Now what I initially tried to do is I tried to go into the Mupin 64 configuration file and I manually inserted the code for the buttons there but every time I opened any game it just reset that file and whenever I went back into it to check it, it cleared out what I had done and I figured out what had happened is that the the configuration settings for emulation station were actually overwriting the Mupin files even when I turned off the the settings to to use like global core settings it still did it like every time so what we need to do even though we're focused on trying to get Mupin 64 to work what we need to do is go into the emulation station folder so emulation station now we need the es input file es underscore input dot cfg now this is a large text file and and you'll notice there's all these different controllers here what we need to do is if you remember from earlier when i had you write down the name of the controller when you plugged it in we need to find that in this file now for the switch co I know it's all the way at the end I know where it is if you have trouble finding it you can scroll through or you can use control F and then search for your controller specifically but we need to find our con the, the controller we're using and here's our code at the bottom and don't worry I'll get I'll get a zoomed in shot when we actually st uh, start editing so you know what it is but find your controller and then beneath it we need to edit the code to manually add our C down and C left button. So these buttons, um, like I mentioned earlier, they 
correspond to the right joystick. So they'll correspond to joystick two left and joystick two down. So when I insert the code, you'll want to look for, it doesn't, I don't think it necessarily matters, but I like to look for joystick one. Uh, I like to look for the last joystick one line of code, put in a space, tab over so you're where you need to be, hit tab twice. And the, re the reason I like to do that, not just because it's kind of neat and makes it easier to, to find, but also we're going to copy that joystick one line of code, paste it right beneath, and then just edit it so it's our joystick two left and we'll change the axis to button. So I'll show you and uh, I'll show you what that looks like specifically. So, so I'll talk you through what to do here. I know you can, can't see it right now as I'm doing it, but once I get it typed in, I'll zoom in, I'll show you the code so that you can just look at it, pause and just type in what you need to type in. I'll add a little extra space so we know what we're doing. Okay, so as I said, we, we want to take that joystick one code and then copy it and then we're going to paste that beneath twice and those will be our two new lines of code for our two different buttons and then we'll we'll manually change the code we need to i've added some extra spaces around what we're inputting i'll remove those at the end but this is what it, this is basically what it should look like you see how i copied that joystick one code and then pasted it twice beneath and as I said, don't worry if you can't quite see this now. I will give you another better zoomed in uh, look once we, once we finish this. So first we want to edit the input name. Right now they both say joystick one up because we copied it. We want to change that to joystick two down and joystick two left. We want to change the type from axis to button. Now for our ID right here, do you remember when I asked, when I told you to write down those button numbers? That's where this is going to come into play. The ID for joystick two down is going to be the button number for C down. So whatever that was for you, uh, the button number for C down. So for me, the C down button number was zero. So I'm going to change the ID to zero. And the C left button number is three. So I'm going to change the ID to three. The value, we want to change that to one. Right now it's negative one. So I am uh, deleting the minus sign. So our value is one. And for code, we're just going to delete that. So delete code and the parentheses so that all you're left with after the value one is a space and then a slash uh, greater than sign. Now let me give you a better, more zoomed in view, just in case you can't see that as uh, well as you need to. Okay, so now I'm just going to delete those extra spaces that I put before and after the new code we just put in. So all I did was remove the extra spaces. Now we're going to go up to the File tab in the top left, and we're going to go to Save. So just click Save, then File again, and Quit. And now we're going to go to File in the top left, and close window. Now we'll just go into uh, uh, now we'll go into the N64 emulator and open up a game. So now all the buttons should be working. We're in a game. We'll just test them out. Start the right trigger, left trigger. I can't really see it, but it just uh, it's working. It just shows you the position on the ball. The Z button does the same thing, and it seems to be working. Left, right. And then up and down changes the clubs in this game, so that seems to be working. And uh, B button will change that's working because the power, again, R1 brings up the camera. And then the C buttons, see up, down, and then uh, in and out. 
So all of our buttons are now working and you should, that should be fine with any game. And this is the Mupin 64 emulator, which as I said, doesn't have that in-game menu. But it should be that all of your systems now have the, the controller properly mapped out. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful if you were having this issue. And maybe I'll see you on the next one. Alright, take it easy.